This program is rated PG. It contains themes and scenes which may not be suitable for very young audiences. Parental guidance is advised. Be advised that the views and opinions of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. Welcome to Global Village. I am the guest host tonight, pitching in for Consul Badi Kunanan, who is in Georgia with the Philippine Boy Scouts. So I thought it befitting uh, for Global Village to invite my fellow consuls um, from the Consular Corps of the Philippines to talk about the organization, and the programs, and you know the contributions that we do to the Philippines. Um, kindly welcome. Uh, we have Consul General of the U.S. Embassy, Russell Brown, and our Vice Dean of the Consular Corps, Michael Ann. All right, so Michael, uh, maybe we can start with uh, the profile of the Consular Corps of the Philippines. And as I understand, this has been, what, 47 years, established in 1971. Yes, we are actually going on, on uh, our 47th year. Uh, the Consular Corps was established back in 1971. Uh, originally, the concept was to create an association for the career and the honoraries to be able to get together and uh, to fellowship with one another. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, it basically grew in terms of size with uh, more consuls, both from the honorary and the career side, participating or finding out more about it and participating. And um, it, it's continued to evolve since mm -hmm. then. Yeah, so for, well, it, it's like a fellowship, it's like a face-to-face -face contact and then give a face to each country. Yes, exactly, exactly. But uh, in terms of its uh, evolution, it, it went from just that casual social fellowship to uh, a more structured mm -hmm. setup without losing that fellowship concept. You know, in terms of the fellowship and continuing with the fellowship, mm -hmm. we still in the Consular Corps of the Philippines have our periodic uh, get-togethers where you know people just let their hair down mm -hmm. and relax after work uh, it's usually at a pre-designated place so that uh, we can also welcome the the newly arrived career consuls here and help them acclimate to uh, the culture and to the society yeah. but in terms of the structured evolution of it we have actually done over the past couple of decades uh, monthly lunch meetings wherein again we still have that that face-to-face -face, that get-together that camaraderie but evolving into a more structured setup wherein we actually have a speaker, we have a specific agenda, mm -hmm. and then uh, that fellowship uh, is, is focused towards or directed towards that topic or the topic of discussion or the speaker that we've invited yeah. to talk about either uh, an existing social issue. In the current or event, a current whatever event. Yes. concern of, you know, of the exactly. day. Exactly. Yeah. All right, I know that, uh, well, the Embassy of the United States of America has always been active, very much involved, and in fact we had several deans uh, that were from, well, the Consul General of the United States. And uh, we have our new Consul General here who is barely a year yeah, in the just, Philippines. Just one year uh, here in the Philippines, and I'm very much delighted to take up this uh, long tradition of the United States Embassy being uh, active in the Consul Corps of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Well. I, I know that uh, you know that the career diplomats come and go, right? But um, it's easier for them to, like you said, to immerse in in, in, the, in society with the consular corps of the Philippines because then it's like a shortcut to knowing uh, who, where to, where to go, what to do, you know, stuff like that. And, right. and not only that, Annette. Um, it also, in terms of the recent evolution that I mentioned earlier, uh, in terms of continuing to help evolve the organization, we've actually instituted a program where during our lunch meetings, we also invite people from various government offices mm -hmm. to sit with us, uh, sit at different tables during the monthly lunches and interact and exchange business cards, exchange uh, numbers 
with our colleagues mm -hmm. from, from the Consulate Corps. Oh, yeah. And that in itself increases the, the circle, uh, mm -hmm. the community circle that you have, instead mm -hmm. of just the, the Consulate Corps members, uh, both from the career and the honoraries, interacting uh, and uh, associating with each other, now you're adding an, a new group to the mix. Mm -hmm. Again, to further the, uh, the relationship of particularly our career members uh, to help them further their activities here in the Philippines. Well, yes, I know that well, ever since we have been active, uh, I know that there was this uh, initiative to pair or to partner with the uh, Bureau of Immigrations mm -hmm. because a lot of, of our, well, well the, the nationals of the countries that we present uh, need assistance, um, mm -hmm. most probably something to do with the immigrations. And that's a nice partnership that we did with the uh, Bureau of Immigration, right? And then, of course, uh, the Department of Foreign Affairs for whatever concerns, again, with the nationals that we represent. Yes, exactly. But, you know, uh, as I mentioned, adding to that mix, something that uh, some people do not even consider was to bring in the Philippine National Police. Yes. Uh, yeah, you know, some of our colleagues are aware that there is a foreign liaison division, mm -hmm. but to actually have a representative of the PNP attending our meetings mm -hmm. and you know, socializing with, or not really socializing, but mm -hmm. uh, strengthening their ties and their relations mm -hmm. with uh, our consuls yes. has resulted so far in, in a lot of positive uh, effects. Mm -hmm. uh, number yes. one, uh, better relations overall as an organization mm -hmm. with the Philippine National Police. Yeah, and so there's the a face because, exactly. because like you don't know who to call or who to talk precisely, to. Precisely. So you can be going around in circles, but with the yes. consular corps having this um, mm. good uh, relations with the PNP, then we, again, we can um, have a contact person and call, uh, this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it, it helps to serve to the uh, benefit of the Philippine National Police as well mm -hmm. in terms of that relationship that we've created mm -hmm. to avoid or at least minimize the perception that, oh, the PNP, just because they're dealing with a foreign national who uh, ran into some problems here in the Philippines, are focusing on that guy even if it's just a minor altercation. Mm -hmm. you know, there's more transparency now because yes. we know that there's a face there that we can talk to and provide us with information. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, that contact, uh, the contact uh, persons that we have mm -hmm. can also tell their people, uh, kindly provide us with a full report, you know, because our friends in the consular corps will be asking us as well mm -hmm. for an update with regard to their national who yes, uh, exactly. might have run into some issues. All right. And furthering that, we've also started with uh, the National Bureau of Investigation in terms of their attending our uh, monthly lunch meetings as well. Mm -hmm. Again, to further uh, the relationship between the consular corps members and the National Bureau of Investigation for better right. facilitation of requirements with regard to assisting our foreign nationals yes. or even possible future collaborations with the different countries represented in the consular yeah. corps. Yeah, with the different departments of, of, of uh, the government, right? Yes. So anyway, yeah, like you said, it's evolving and th th there are other activities that we find interesting that we get together and try to, you know, do something as an organization. And uh, I think what's very, very interesting and uh, commendable, I would say, is the, uh, our social responsibility, uh, the corporate social uh, responsibility, the programs that we come up with. Yes. So. Well, actually, it, it's really interesting that, that uh, we've, we've gotten to that part of uh, the background of the Consular mm -hmm. Corps in terms of its, its activities and its values and its programs. Mm -hmm. um, originally, the Consular Corps would have the annual Consular Ball. Mm -hmm. And the, the purpose before was, you know, the sell tickets to the, the members, you know, so that we can actually pay for the end of year party. Mm -hmm. But again, the evolution that, that has happened with that is that it's become one of the principal programs mm -hmm. for the Corps mm -hmm. to generate funds to donate to different uh, charities and, as you mentioned, social activities. Mm -hmm. And even that itself has, has actually evolved further into looking at these social activities as something that should benefit the entire community, yeah. not just that one specific or initial aspect that we were, we, the Consular Corps, mm -hmm. was looking at or were looking at mm -hmm. as something that we can participate in. Yeah. I think that, uh, well, Russell here has also some ideas on you know, future programs that uh, we can, 
uh, get involved with, aside from the, the past the activities that we've been doing. Well, one of the things that I've been very uh, impressed by is um, not only the uh, traditional charitable uh, social engagement um, mm -hmm. that uh, the CCP has done here in Philippines, but also the possibility of moving now into some things that are more um, uh, environmental in nature, are more um, sort of uh, have a benefit to uh, the world in general. And um, I'm excited to, uh, to be part of the CCP at this time. And um, I think that uh, um, uh, my colleague, um, Consul Eng, will uh, be able to tell us a little bit more about those potential mm. programs going forward. All right. Uh, well, like uh, there's on, there are ongoing projects right now and you would like to also take it further, right? But like for example, the, the mangroves, we have started this uh, uh, refor reforestation mm -hmm. project of mangroves, yes. what, six years ago, seven years ago? Uh, back that. in 2012, actually. All right. When, when, we first, um, when we first created the Environmental Concerns Committee under the Social Development Committee, we were looking at, we meaning me, myself, as, as a member of that uh, Environmental Concerns Committee and, and my colleagues there, the co-members, we were looking at what we can do to uh, help uh, certain programs or projects that deal directly with uh, the environment. Mm -hmm. So in, in having met with uh, Conservation International here in the Philippines, they pretty much become our um, uh, uh, partner in terms of directing us to these uh, environmental projects. Mm -hmm. uh, going back to 2012, they were the ones who directed us to Mindoro as a first site for mangrove reforestation. Back then, we had a, um, a bike run, which uh, was held in Dasmarinas Village in for Makati. For the mangrove project. For the mangroves project. All right. Uh, wherein we raised um, enough money to uh, plant about uh, 15,000 to 20,000 uh, propagules mm -hmm. uh, for, for that part of Mindoro. And, and some of the was pictures you see here. Was it hit by the typhoon, a strong typhoon, or it's constantly being battered by? Actually, you know. it's, it's several things, but it boils down to two issues. Mm -hmm. Number one, uh, of course, uh, some of the mangroves will, will uh, fall or will um, be uprooted depending on how strong the typhoon is right. that, that hits yeah. that particular area. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it was also the involvement of the community. Mm -hmm. uh, there, unfortunately, was, uh, and in some areas still, and I, uh, the, the thought that they're basically in hindrance, the, the mangroves are, are in the way, you know, in terms of them being able to get out to the, to the ocean, yeah, to be able to fish, right, yeah. not realizing that the mangroves actually provide the natural the environment yeah. that the baby fish or the fish fry right. need to actually grow exactly. and eventually go out back into the ocean that these fisher folk or mm -hmm. these fisher communities mm -hmm will need so to sustain way, themselves. We had to educate them first about mm -hmm. the importance of the, the mangrove, especially mm -hmm. I think it plays a very important role also on the um, global warming. Uh, I mean, helping mm -hmm. that uh, it, it could uh, help with the oxidation. Or yes, uh, yeah, yes right? it does, it does. And at the same time, it also protects the coastal areas the coastal area, you know, from yes. further erosion, yeah. uh, particularly in, in a country like the Philippines, mm -hmm. where you don't really have enough people to enforce uh, certain uh, development restrictions. Mm -hmm. A lot of these communities build right in front of the water, if not on the water. And, and also protects the reefs, right? Exactly. Yeah. All right. Eventually, it, it does. Yeah, so, but so it was a very good... Uh, project also to, to start uh, yes. with, with the consular court. Yes. Uh, initially, I mean, it was a good startup project. Uh, but again, in, in, uh, through our partnership with Conservation International, we asked them, can we pick another place or can you identify another mm -hmm. place yeah. so that we don't have to keep going back right. to the same community. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to spread it out a bit. Okay. So the second location was actually in uh, Calatagan, uh, ah. driving distance from, from Manila. And for that particular project, we did a fun run in mm. BGC. Right. And we ended up raising enough money, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, around uh, half a million pesos wow, that's to good. have enough propagules to cover 20,000 uh, 20, hectares. No, not hectares. Uh, square, well, 
Square meters. All right. No, it might be hectares. I, I have to check my, my <laughs> figures, and you have to excuse me for that. Okay. But it was a much, much larger area than the first project that we did in Mindoro. Mm. Um, and what, but what's interesting about the evolution of that project with that second community in Calatagan mm -hmm. is that they had an immediate realization. Mm -hmm. Was it? Yeah. Uh, okay. So it's 20 hectares worth of uh, mangrove propagules. So what's interesting about the evolution of that project from the first to the second was that th that second community had a faster realization mm -hmm. that we can actually uh, have a side business mm -hmm. where we can involve our kids to actually conduct tours mm -hmm. of that mangrove area. Right. So it became an eco park. And it was interesting to visit the place after we did the, the planting because you could see the boardwalk was in place, the signage was in place. But not only that, the the different families made these little pictures and signages All identifying right. the different mangroves, identifying the because different there are several varieties. animals. Right. Yes, yeah. animals that, that basically make that their home. Okay. You know, so the it's bats, an echo the park. Birds. It evolved into an Exactly, park. exactly. Wonderful. All right. Um, okay, so that's the mangrove project that we have mm -hmm. started and yes. it's still continuing to other areas. And hopefully... Yes we could still come up with the third area, right? Oh, uh, we actually are in the works for a third area. Uh, we've already pr proposed to the Executive Board of the Consular Corps that uh, the Environment Committee under the Social Development Committee would like to look at uh, this particular mangrove project as a flagship project for the Corps. Mm -hmm. And again, that goes back into that term that I keep using, evolution. Mm -hmm. These projects, as uh, along with the Consular Corps, must keep evolving so that mm -hmm. we can maintain, if not uh, be at the forefront of, yeah. of, of real social impact. Mm -hmm. You know, we realize, and the communities that we've uh, assisted realize, mm -hmm. that there's more to just planting the mangroves and helping the fishes grow mm -hmm. so that they can actually fish for them you know, when, they're, when they're bigger. Yeah. It, it's about trickling down the effect all the way down to the grassroots right, where you've yeah. got the community now the community looking at it walk, as yeah. a, an eco park project mm -hmm. where they know that as long as they sustain it, they're not dependent on fishery as their yeah. livelihood. Mm -hmm. They can also look at an alternative, in this case, ecotourism yes. uh, as another, a secondary livelihood mm -hmm. for them. At the same time, the different... Um, uh, communities attached to that original community mm -hmm. can also benefit by saying that, look, uh, in our community next door to ours, mm -hmm. there's an eco park, mm -hmm. and you know they if they don't have a facility in that immediate community for people to stay overnight or yeah, you know for a weekend, they have the homestay. They can they can go yeah. to the other right. communities nearby yeah. and then go by uh, land to the mm -hmm. main eco park area. Right. You know, yeah, so like like homestay, or it becomes a, a whole little industry that Precisely. would benefit the whole community. Precisely. And then going into uh, the relationship, that the relationships that uh, we've pushed uh, with the Consular Corps, particularly with the Philippine National Police, with the Bureau of Immigration, with the National Bureau of Investigation and the DFA, you know, they, they've openly shared with us their interest in participating by contacting the local units in the areas where we mm -hmm. have pre-identified so that they can actually participate, they right. can help police the area, right. to keep it safe and secure mm -hmm. for, for tourists who are both local and foreign, and, and that's what we want. Perfect. Well, anyway, we just have to take a short break and we'll go on with the other projects that the Consular Corps is doing. Stay with us. <laughs> 